So the next presenter is Mr. Lesbridge, Mr. Kurt Lesbridge. Uh, good afternoon. Nice to be back here again to uh, present to you the, uh, the issue of the Labrador flag. You see the sweater that I'm wearing? That flag belongs to the Labradorian people, not to those who would destroy the land that belongs to the Labradorian people. So I also respectfully ask that you remove the Labradorian people's flag from the backdrop of your presentations. Whether you do that or not is obviously up to you, but I ask that you do. Um, Tim Horton's tea leaves your mouth kind of sticky, so I'm going to drink some of this water while I'm still able to drink it. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, there's uh, some people are here this afternoon that weren't here uh, earlier today when, when I talked about the... Uh, Excuse me, Mr. Lethbridge. Sure, no problem. When I talked about the protocol within the room, and uh, I, I would I would ask people uh, um, not to laugh or show clapping or support of what's said or not said or show your displeasure. Uh, uh, the the idea is that to, to allow the presenter to make their presentation without any uh, any uh, any interference from the audience. The panel wants to hear what's been said. And I'd ask you to, if you would be respectful and and, uh, and uh, grant my wishes in that regard. Thank you. Mr. Lethbridge. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of technical talk around the, this room and around through the media. And obviously on any project there will be a lot of technical talk. But as I said in my presentation a couple of weeks back, uh, we must not forget the spirituality of this river, land, and people. And as a part of that, in my opening, um, I wish to acknowledge uh, the loss of uh, people near and dear to me that would have been here today. Um, Mary Adams, my dear friend. Buddy Chalk, my dear friend. Gerald and Lockie Dyson, friends of all of us in this room. And my father, Charles Lethbridge, who would be here today as well. And I'm going to open with a powerful statement that was written by a friend of mine as it relates to the Grand River, Misty Shipu. It was written by David Aidy. And Dave wrote, When the mighty Grand River finally succumbs to her murderers, she will let out one final cry. And the eagle and the osprey, the fish and the seals, the bear and the caribou, the wolf and the songbirds, the waterfowl and all the creatures, her children, that she nurses will all stop when they hear that cry. They will all turn and look, and then all will be silent. The murder of Muskrat Falls will be complete, and from there on, nothing will ever be the same. Now, were we, the people of Labrador, that silent, you would succeed with your dam. But we, the people of Labrador, are no longer willing to be that silent, and therefore, I'm here to tell you that you will not succeed with your dam. Your project is not going to go ahead. You'll still be on the payroll for a while, but your project will not go ahead. I'm serious about that. Your project will not go ahead. You may have lined up some ducks, but we got ducks too. And we know how to line up ours as well. We already have the most precious, beautiful land on earth. We already have the most beautiful river on earth. What would damming it do to give us a, would that give us a more better or more precious piece of land or a more better or more precious river? Absolutely it would not. We've watched and listened to the proponent. We have heard all the wonderful positive benefits for the Labradorian people. All the jobs and the glorious things that are going to come with a massive 1950s mentality hydro dam. We have heard all the wonderful things from the puppetry of the greenback dollar regime. Speaking about the damming of our heritage, of our land, our water. We've even, even watched as a new candidate uh, for the member of parliament has risen up with a sudden great compassion for the Labradorian people. 
proposing that we dam the river as quickly as possible. We've heard the positive benefits proposed by Nelcor, a corp multinational corporation, and the province of Newfoundland. And we don't believe it. We can't afford to believe it, you see. We can't afford to give away any more because we've lost too much already. Too many generations of loss have made us mistrustful and doubtful. It matters not what technical language you use. We still don't believe it. So the lines are drawn. You have the province, you have your computer screens and your budgets, and you have your workforce ready. But we too are ready. And the, mess the reason why I came here today was the same reason as last week, or three, four weeks ago, however long ago that was, that we will meet you in that space or your minions in that space. And we will lay in front of your dozers and your loaders and your dynamite crews or whatever, the, whatever else that you need to try to make this project happen. We will be there and we will interfere. And the world will know and the world will not cheer for you. The world will not look in Mr. favor Mr. Lester, on the province. Yes, sir. I know that you're obviously very sincere and very emotional. This, this is a leading very emotional somewhere. Issue. But uh, I would ask you to make your presentation to the panel, and uh, not, not to Nelk or to the panel. There's a separate, and, there's uh, a difference? Uh, well, uh, yes, sir, there is a difference. And, and, and I would refer if you, if you would address your presentation to the panel. There is a difference. So don't look at Gilbert, look no, at you? Well, <laughs> I'm trying to say I, you're making the accusations and you're pointing your fingers and whatever, and I, I realize your emotion, and I realize that this is a hearing from the community. We want to hear what you're saying, and, 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 and you're, you're telling this, and that's excellent. But I, I would, it would be preferable if you would make your presentation to the panel. Okay, all the same things that I just said, only directed to you. Whoever else is in the room can listen to it or not. But the words are still the same, and they come from the same place. Deep down inside of me, as a Labradorian, I don't think you fully understand that. You may have some concept of it from your own background if we were to come and dam your river in your backyard, if it hasn't already been done. Anyway, I digress. Labrador is a female. Labrador is a she. And she got roped into a marriage that she didn't want when she was weak and down and out and beaten and battered. She got lumped in. And she got destroyed. She got raped. She got divided. She got funded apart. But there's something very powerful happening today that you don't see. I won't look over that way, okay? But I know that he's listening. That's all that matters. The powerful thing that's, that I'm talking about is not the river. It's the unity amongst the Labradorians on this common cause. Not from the top, from the political organizations, from the people. The people are starting to unite. Grassroots people. All over Labrador. We don't want this project. Some people may be afraid to talk, but they will talk when the time comes. We know this. We know this. We have representatives here from the Nunatsiavut government and the Nunatuhavut. Official or unofficial, I haven't talked to them, I don't know. But I know there are people in this room from those organizations. Our great-great-grandchildren are going to stand on this land called Labrador one day. If, if the world keeps going, that is. We, we hope we go past 2012. Hmm. And they will look back and they will remember the names of the people who stood up for the river. And they will remember the names of the people who didn't stand up for the river. And they will inherit whatever decisions that we make. I'm not here today for Kirk Lethbridge or my ego or any financial gain. I'm here because of the great-great-grandchildren and beyond. This river belongs to them, not to me. I'm just someone that protects their river. That's all I'm here for. I'm here to protect something that belongs to people not born yet. And I am not willing to leave them methylmercury. I'm not willing 
to leave them with a situation where the salmon don't come back to the rivers because salmon smell their way back to the rivers. And when you alter that, they cannot smell their way home. And then they won't come home. So these are the reasons why I'm here today. Not, I don't have, I'm sorry, I looked over that way. Um, you need to move the table maybe a little bit on that angle so I don't have to see them. Or, or a scattered look doesn't hurt. Sir. A scattered look? <laughs> the people in this world who ignore fact and they, they run on green, but it's not green energy, it's green dollar. And these people ignore the David Suzuki's of the world. They ignore the experts of the world. They ignore the expertise in Denmark, the alternatives. Billions of dollars saved in taxpayers' money. You put up ten wind parks on the island of Newfoundland. You put up five in Labrador. I'd be sitting there with you. I would. Why wouldn't I? Little destruction. Lots of energy. Everybody happy. The river is still okay. But that doesn't seem to be on the radar. And it seems that we live in a planet where no one will stop using fossil fuels until the last drop of fuel in the bottoms of the ocean is drained out. Then we'll go to electric cars. What kind of mentality is that? My God, does anyone watch the news or the nature of things or something? You can Google this stuff, you know. It's amazing that people will not listen to common sense and logic and expertise about saving the planet. Now, I don't want to get way off into an environmental thing, but then again, this is a massive environmental project. Catastrophe, we call it. What some call a project. I have a little bit more of this water again. Well, I can. And why I say that is because they will come when there won't be enough water to drink. Um, I already said that we're going to stop the dam, which we will. Um, there's a cry in the wilderness today, echoing through our communities. And it's protect your heritage, protect your land, protect what you got left. We've given enough. Enough is enough. We've given billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars to the Confederation building in St. John's so they could come back and hit us and beat us with it some more. The he beating the she in the marriage that she didn't want. That's the way we feel deep inside of us. And we've had enough of it. So we're going to stop this project, this proposed project. And uh, today, I'm very proud of my Nunatsiavut cousins. I'm very proud of the settlers and the Métis and the Innu peoples who have not taken the greenback dollar and who are not asking for it. I'm very proud of those people. And it's nice to know that right back here behind me, there's a whole bunch of them. And there's lots more out there. We have been held in fear for centuries. There are those here who would say, what's that got to do with this presentation or this panel or with NALCOR? It has everything to do with it. Because if we weren't held in fear and bondage for centuries, you would never be allowed to do this to us and get away with it. It's because of our fear that this can happen. But we're overcoming our fear. The fear today is not, if I speak up, what are they going to say or do to me? The fear is, if we don't speak up, what are they going to do to us? That's the fear that we have, and, and that's what's helping us overcome the fears that we have. When we lay in front of those dozers or loaders or whatever it's going to be, Labrador is going to awaken. Labrador is going to wake up. And there's going to be people coming from all over this land to support us in mass numbers. And that's a fact. And there are those who don't believe that because they think, no, we're still scared. No, 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 we're not scared. I, I must admit, I, I, I get scared sometimes. But that's only fear from up here. Down beneath that fear, there's power and strength. 
And more and more people all the time are starting to realize their power and their strength. Because I said, history will remember the names of who spoke here during these panel hearings and what they said. And I'm very proud that my voice is recorded right now and the great, great, great grandchildren of everybody here will know where Kirk Lethbridge stood. He didn't sell out. Not for sale. Don't have cement contracts on the side. Didn't have any secret meetings behind his people's back in the last year or two or three years building towards this day. Not a puppet for anybody. I stand, I sit, I should say, I sit today right here in front of this panel as a representative of the children not yet born. So thank you for uh, listening to me. And sorry if I look too much at Gilbert Bennett over there. He doesn't look that great anyway, but uh, anyway, thanks. I'm sure that you said that in a gesture the last part. So Mr. Dethbridge, uh, uh, I mean, say the panel is very appreciative of the fact that you've come forward and made your views known. And uh, I, I think on behalf of the panel, I can, I can assure you that we, we, we do have some appreciation for the, uh, you know, the depth of your passion about what you're saying and that type of thing. And, and uh, we appreciate your, 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 your presentation. Uh, are there any questions for my colleagues? Nelcor, did you have any questions? Is there anybody in the audience who have a question for Mr. Lethbridge? If not, uh, we'll go then to the uh, – thank you once again, sir. No problem.